Talking Shares is presented in partnership with White Oak Cottage. For more information, visit whiteoakcottage.co.uk. Hello and welcome to episode 97 of Talking Shares. I'm Mike from Hull KR Shares and today we're going to take a look at this 1977-78 home share by Adidas. Now this is the oldest share within Hull KR Shares collection. It's kind of bordering on 46 to 47 years old as we approach the end of 2023 and we welcome 2024. So this share is old. Um, when you, well, you can look at it, just look at it, it is not in the greatest of conditions. We'll start and we'll talk about the front. It's one of those really heavy cotton shirts. We saw this quite a lot during the, well, I say the 70s and the 80s. It was probably very prevalent before that as well. But finding examples to be able to touch and feel and even for me to collect at this stage is very, very difficult. I've only ever seen one shirt that is actually older than this one. So they are a rarity indeed. So the front of the shirt, all white. And then we have got a stitched red band. So it's not within the design of the shirt. It's a separate piece of fabric which has been stitched onto the front of the shirt. You can actually pull the shirt at the back and the band at the front and it does actually kind of pull apart. Um, and so you can feel that there is that movement of air in the middle. Um, it's quite surreal really when you think of how shirts are made in this modern era. Quite a few things are, are absent um, by just things that we're used to seeing. There is no front of shirt sponsor. Okay, I didn't have a front of shirt sponsor until 1981. So this was still four or five years earlier than that. Um, you'll also notice there's no club crest either. Okay, I didn't actually have a club crest regularly on playing shirts until the early 1980s. I think it might be late 70s actually. 79, 80 was when crests actually appeared um, on playing shirts. We did use a crest in the 1964 Challenge Cup final. I'll pop a picture of that crest up for you there so you can have a look at that one. But yeah, it was something that we didn't actually um, use. You'll see here that we've got Adidas's uh, Trefoil logo, the manufacturer marker. This was before there was even putting the word Adidas underneath. So this is probably one of the very first examples of a Trefoil on a shirt. <clears throat> You'll see here that we've got some reinforced stitching. That is to stop the shirt ripping. As you can see, it's done its job because the shirt hasn't ripped at the front there. Um, I'll pop some pictures up, close-ups for you, but I'll also put some pictures up of the inside. If I think it's important to see the detail that goes into that reinforced stitching, especially from a manufacturing perspective when we look at the internals of the shirt. So yeah, it's such, such an old shirt. I absolutely I love it. I love it. This is where we're getting good now. We're looking at some of these episodes and they're, they're getting really, really interesting because I'm pulling out some absolute corkers as we uh, charge on to episode number 100. As you can see from the sleeve here, we have got, well, what was the uh, the famous three Adidas stripes down the sleeve. Uh, we have got all sorts of damage going on, as you can see here. This one has split and frayed and it is missing so much of its cotton. You know, you can see here, you can almost look inside it the way that it has actually um, just completely frayed. Um, the right hand side here, as you're looking at it, is much more in contact, um, intact, sorry. But this left side, wow, it's absolutely just falling. And you can sort of even see the way that the sleeves have been attached. Look how short that sleeve is. You know, it's not really a set in sleeve. It's definitely not raglan. It's, it's kind of like a separate piece of fabric, which has just sort of been added on, uh, which is strange in itself. We've got these beautiful red cuffs, really, really thick. And then just under here, we have got the reinforced stitching. And you can actually see where the sleeve has been stitched onto the main body of the shirt. And then there's a circle going around there of that reinforced stitching, which will be to stop um, it ripping under the arm as well, which again, you can see. And you can even see some of the contact points here for where the band has been uh, applied, as I've said, with it being a separate piece of fabric um, to the one that is actually forms the main body of the shirt. So from a constructing element, this is probably one of the most intricate shirts when it comes to putting it together. And it's absolutely wonderful that I'm able to bring you it for this episode of Talking Shirts. Um, as we look to this other sleeve here, and we've got the exact same thing going on as the other one. We've got so much damage. I mean, the fraying that's going on here, and at the top, as you can see, it's just completely missing. You can kind of see some red smudge marks where the, the fabric and um, the colour dye has run a little bit. So you can actually see a little bit of shading where that actually yeah, once was. But yeah, the, the damage on this, it's just absolutely beautiful. And I hope you're enjoying watching this episode just as much as I am enjoying it, bringing it to you. 
So before we have a look at the number back, the, the back of the shirt, sorry, and here is a quick word from our sponsor. White Oak Cottage is a two bedroom luxury holiday cottage set in the stunning Lincolnshire Wolds. It has two ensuite bedrooms, a hot tub, wood burner, Wi Fi, electric vehicle charger, and is pet friendly. It is ideally situated in the Wolds, yet only 15 miles from the coast and 25 miles from the historic city of Lincoln. For more information, visit whiteoakcottage.co.uk. Right then, let's crack on with episode 97 of Talking Shirts. And as you can see, I've spun the mannequin round and now we're looking at the back of the shirt. And the back of the shirt is just as interesting as the front, if maybe not even just a little bit more interesting, um, because I think it is absolutely wonderful. So as you can see here, the band continues all the way around. We've spoken in previous episodes about the band stopping on these modern day shirts so it doesn't obstruct the number. But what used to happen, especially in this time frame, was when a number was put on the back of a shirt, it was actually on a separate patch. So this number eight has been applied to a piece of fabric, which then the piece of fabric has been applied to the back of the shirt. So the red band actually continues underneath here. If I was to run my finger under here, I can actually feel this, this contact point here where the red band is at the bottom, I can actually feel where the top is. You might even be able to sort of see it just on the picture uh, that you're watching on the video. I will pop some close-ups up for you just to sort of see if you can see that um, through digital media rather than just be seeing it in person. Um, but yeah, I mean, the stitching, it's, it's really neat in some parts and then quite rough in others. There's little bits of holes going on. Um, as you can see, there's a little bit of dye smudge where there's some sort of red which has gone into the white which starts to look a little bit pinky and then this number eight is absolutely fantastic what a font and design that is absolutely incredible it's something that we'd seen in sort of the early 70s as well um i think hulk did actually did a full range on it um i'm going to say 2021 that it came out i'll pop some pictures up of it for you um i think we called it the 1971 range um where they did actually um, encapsulate that number and that style of, of font and put it into a modern day design, which I can remember being very, very popular at the time. So it's um, it's good that we've been able to recreate a little bit of that, but I could just look at this all day. It's wonderful. It's like, it's, it's, it's a piece of history. When, when I started shirt collecting back in 2012, I didn't quite envisage having some sort of mad, crazy obsession like what I've got now. But as things go along, you kind of have little like bucket list things in your mind where you think, you know, I'd quite like to achieve this or I'd quite like to achieve that. Or I'd look at thinking, right, how can I be better? How can I? Do... I never, ever once thought I would get a shirt from the 1970s. The shirts from the 1980s are so difficult to find. And when you find them, you need to have really deep pockets. Now, I probably got quite fortunate that this one was in bad of a shape as it was because the gentleman that, that sought me it uh, was very kind in, in what he charged me for it because if it had have been in a better state, I'd have probably been looking at two, maybe even three times what I paid for it. Um, so it's really important that like I don't take things like this for granted. Uh, I've always had like uh, the mindset of when it comes to collecting, look after the things you've got and don't worry about what you haven't because the collecting game, it, it can be quite cutthroat. People want things that they haven't got and it, it's nice to get new things, it really is. But I think it's so important to spend time with the shirts that you've got and really enjoy the, the, the collecting side of it and really looking at it. It's a piece of history. you know. One of my friends always says it's like a museum. I'm like, it's not a museum. It's just my back bedroom. But it's important to remember how kind of far back things go. And, and some of the, you know, the moments that are within the shirt collections is something that really, really I, I don't take for granted because I know how important and how special um, it really is. Sorry, I went on a massive tangent there, but you can just see that my passion just absolutely oozes through when it comes to shirts and collecting, especially those of Hulk Air. It's something that I am very, very, very passionate about. So this shirt, as we said, we've got number eight on the back. Now, photo matching is a big part of what I do, right? I'm not even going to try because shirts, <laughs> shirt pictures from the 1970s are just so hard to find. And when you do, they're normally from the front and not from the back. Photographers obviously want to take a picture of a player from the front. That's where their money is. I almost need a way team's photography because then that normally has the back of our players and the front of the opposing teams. So a uh, little tip there for you if anyone's trying to photo match. If you look for the away team's photographer, you'll be probably more likely to be successful. But yeah, during the 1970s, I'm not even going to try. Now I've got a stat sheet for the 1977-78 season. When I had a little look through there, this shirt could, or should, should I say, have been worn by the likes of John Millington, um, Roy Holdstock, Paul Rose, John Cunningham. All these guys played 
in the number eight during the 1977-78 season. This shirt could have even been worn for training. It could have been worn by somebody in, in training. Uh, because training gear wasn't a thing back then. Um, you know, Mike Smith told me all sorts of stories about how uh, players were trade in shirts um, and how some might even go walkies. Um, but yeah, it's it's important that, um, you know, I, I don't necessarily just class this damage on here as being game damage because it could have been training training damage as well. Um, and it could have even been worn after that. How, how do you know? How are you supposed to know? Um, obviously, it's, uh, it's so difficult to kind of find out that level of information, especially when we're talking about a shirt that is kind of creeping up to 50 years old which uh for a guy in his uh his mid to early 30s is uh yeah very very special indeed so yeah that's been episode 97 of talking shirts the oldest shirt within the collection i get the feeling it will probably hold that tag for a little while um you never know because you never do quite know what's going to crop up or what's around that next corner but i am uh, really proud uh, to have to have this shirt within my collection Thank you very much, obviously, again. A uh, little bit of a late Christmas present for you here with this one. Um, in another couple of weeks, I'll be back with episode 98. And in episode 98, we're going to look at something from the 2023 season. And that is one of the diamond kits that was match issued to Lachlan Coop. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you had a wonderful Christmas. Happy New Year. And I'll be back with episode 98 very soon. Bye for now.